one of the ways you can boil the whole thing down. You know, one of the simplest ways to understand what an awakened life, what a spiritually awakened life really looks like in action is that it is a life of trust. It's a life in which we have decided to trust, to put our faith in a mystery that we'll never be able to see directly, that we'll never be able to know or control or predict or grab onto. Welcome to Meditation Changes Everything with spiritual teacher Craig Hamilton, a podcast exploring the deeper potentials of meditation practice and how it can change every aspect of human life. In this episode, Craig addresses a timeless challenge all of us face on the spiritual path, how to have faith and trust in something we cannot see, know, or control. As we progress on our journey of awakening, there comes a time when taking a leap of faith is essential and unavoidable. Today, we'll explore what a life of deep faith and trust really looks like in practice and how meditation can help us open ourselves to this profound capacity. Craig also includes a contemplation exercise. So grab a piece of paper and a pen before we begin if you'd like to take notes. We hope you enjoy the show. Here's Craig. I just want to invite you to take a moment to just sit with the word faith and notice how it sits with you. And then sit with the word trust. And notice how you how it sits with you. Now we're well aware that the word faith conjures up negative connotations for some of us who were told that we had to have faith in some external higher power that never quite rang true and that didn't seem ultimately to maybe be worthy of our faith or <laughs> that our faith did in, in some, our blind faith in an external higher power didn't seem to really deliver anything. Um, so I just want to invite us all to let go of past associations with this whole idea and step into just an open, innocent reflection on, on it. Because see, when we are on a path of spiritual awakening, we are going to be required at some point on that path, and perhaps at many points on that path, and perhaps you could say at every point on the path, to take a leap of faith. The spiritual path is a path of learning to trust in something that we cannot see, that our mind cannot know, that we cannot control. From one point of view, trust and faith are the entire path. You know, you know, as a teacher, one's often tempted to kind of try to boil it all down to one thing, which is a good exercise. You say, well, it all comes down to, you know, I often chuckle at myself because at different days, I feel like it all boils down to something <laughs> slightly different. <laughs> but, but, so I like to say one of the ways you can boil the whole thing down, you know, one of the simplest ways to understand what an awakened life, what a spiritually awakened life really looks like 
in action is that it is a life of trust. It's a life in which we have decided to trust, to put our faith in a mystery that we'll never be able to see directly, that we'll never be able to know or control or predict or grab onto. And for us human beings, that is one of the hardest things. Ha learning to, getting to a place where we're willing to live in a place of trust, of faith. To walk forward into life without the security of our old navigation system telling us what to do believing we know how to how to get through life and what the right thing to do is and who we are and how it all works to leave all that behind and say no I'm going to I'm going to live in the unknown and let reality reveal itself to me moment by moment and let my responses reveal themselves moment by moment I'm going to Leave behind the known, leave behind the familiar, leave behind the illusion of certainty, the delusion of, of control, and live in, a, in what the, the Christian mystic called a cloud of unknowing. I'm going to live my life in a cloud of unknowing so that something so much greater, something of such a life of, of superordinary, profound significance, meaning purpose, can begin to unfold out of that mystery that I'm making room for. For us to get to a place where we're willing to do that is... is arguably the whole the great challenge that's what all the practice is for that's what the great work of trans of self transformation is all about letting things be is an act of trust and faith i'm going to let things be and i'm going to trust that the world won't fall apart when i'm no longer trying to control it now, of course, doing that in meditation, you know, if you look at it rationally, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a bit, well, gee, Craig, aren't you over-dramatizing? I mean, of course the world's not going to fall apart. I'm just sitting here in meditation. How, what, you know, as if, as if I was the one holding it all together. <laughs> but, but in practice, what do we come up against when we try a practice like this? We come up against a big no, a big, you know, a fear, a great fear. We come up against resistance, sometimes of epic proportions, simply to letting be, and all manner of distraction and drama can arise within us to, to keep us from simply doing this most simple thing, which is nothing. So, in addition to practicing like this, which is one of the one powerful way to cultivate the kind of trust and faith we're talking about, doing a practice wholeheartedly, consistently, because if we can do it in meditation, we start to realize we can do it in life. But in addition to doing the practice of meditation in this way, it's also worth taking some time to reflect on this challenge of stepping into a life of trust and faith. And in particular, I think to really take where I want to just guide our attention today briefly is why is it that we don't already inherently trust life in this way? 
what why where does our kind of innate lack of trust in faith come from and i don't necessarily mean in a historical sense although maybe that's worth taking a peek at but but just in ourself we to become aware of this it's a kind of viscerally held sense that life might not be so trustworthy other people probably aren't all that trustworthy i don't even know if i'm trustworthy and you know there's i think this whole thing needs to be controlled i need to know as much as i can about every situation beforehand so i can accurately predict what's going to happen and premeditate my response to it to ensure the best possible outcome this kind of no predict control relationship to life that runs so deep in us i don't know if you know this from kind of the the neuroscience field and kind of contemporary brain science cognitive science but one of the things that's been noted um through research and observation and theorizing about these things is that we human beings have a tendon very strong the, our brains i mean this is this is from observing the brain actually our brains put far more energy into focusing on negative events than they do on positive events if you have one like think about a day of your life you have one negative encounter with someone let's say you have 100 positive encounters with people friendly conversations kind interactions with strangers productive meetings with colleagues pleasant intimate moments with your partner whatever all these positive interactions that fill up a day that we all have that's the experience of most days positive interactions with other people when we're engaging with other people and let's say you have one negative interaction it's intense you know somebody said something critical to you or there was a kind of you know you butted heads because <laughs> you had different ideas about them there was some negative energy kind of expressed between you what's the one that you go to bed thinking about what's the one you wake up the next morning thinking about usually it's the one negative one and this is this is universal this has been studied this is just the way we're wired and when you look at it in an from an evolutionary point of view it goes back to if you think about it and it's not so much this way anymore of course but when our in our early days of our human evolution and pre-human evolution if there was something negative that happened that you know back in a, in a more primitive time that typically was like potentially could kill you like you know some food you ate that made you sick well it might have killed you or some person you encountered that was hostile back then you know <laughs> we didn't have laws and we didn't have <laughs> very evolved morality if someone was hostile they might have killed you uh, or an encounter with a wild animal might have killed you and and so you know whereas the positive events that occurred you know friendly exchanges weren't necessarily weren't things that were going to like save your life or save you from danger necessarily they were just positive encounters so you can see our brains evolved we evolved to be very guarded against anything negative and therefore to emphasize the negative to amplify the negative and to amplify danger and to kind of have a sense of danger and so you know and then of course we all have our own childhood wounds which get amplified through life if we if we were raised in a situation where we didn't feel safe as a child that gets amp amplifies this tendency our news media today totally amplifies this tendency because if you just if you watch the news read the news don't you and, or even watch you know television shows <laughs> dramas whatever don't you kind of get the sense that the world's a dangerous place and that there's bad people doing bad things all the time and that's kind of what the world's like but of course, we all have really millions of positive interactions and only very occasional negative ones throughout our life. But we still have this deep sense that the world's kind of not that safe, 
needs to be predicted, controlled. Other people need to be, you know, guarded against. And anyway, without getting any any deeper into the deep psychology of it, I just wanted to, I, I want to take a moment because I think part of what's required spiritually is for us to go through a paradigm shift around the innate trustworthiness, trustworthiness of just about everything. See, I, I, I want to invite us, to, we're going to do a brief contemplation exercise here, reflection. But, but I want you to understand the reason I'm doing this is I want us all to really look in our own experience at, the, at life, the life we've lived. Because most of us, when we look, you know, how to say this simply, <laughs> because of our tendency, our negative bias that's built into our brains for good evolutionary reasons a long time ago. Because of this, because, because we haven't um, emphasized the positive enough, because we've overemphasized the negative because of the way we're built, we've tended to relate to life as much less trustworthy than it is. We've tended to relate to other people as much less trustworthy than they are. We've tended to, to not trust ourselves that much. So we don't take risks. We don't have con you know, confidence to try radical new things without feeling completely sure we're going to know how to do it. You know, many different layers of this. But I want to invite us into a brief reflection. So here's the first one. And I, I want to start with yourself. So when I'm talking about self-trust, because see, arguably spiritual trust is a kind of self-trust. We're trusting that if we let go, stop premeditating, stop, you know, trying to know everything beforehand and be sure that we have everything we need to achieve or what's in front of us, that if we start to trust in our innate ability to meet challenges, to figure things out, to rise to the occasion, that there are resources within us that will rise to meet whatever occasion comes upon us. Like That's one way of looking at what spiritual trust is, what this leap of faith is. It's that there are all these resources within us that will show up to meet the challenges of life if we let go and take a risk to, to, to jump into challenging situations and, let, and see what arises. So I just want to invite you to look back on your life and, and I want to invite you to look for times when you took a risk to try something you weren't sure you were going to be able to, to do or to step up to a challenge like in your career say that seemed beyond your current ability or to yeah maybe I'll that, just leave it at that you know you took took risks substantial risks to step beyond what you felt like were your perceived limitations and and what was the result the actual result in your life not what you feared would happen <laughs> or maybe both what were you afraid of and what was the actual result just reflect a little and identify a few moments
based on these experiences, What can you see about your potential to trust in your trust yourself much more? Could you trust yourself much more? And if so, what is it that you could trust in? What would it mean to trust yourself much more based on your actual experience here, not on theories? Now I want to invite us to reflect, reflect briefly on our trust of other people, but I want to do it a little differently. Now I want to invite you to survey your whole life up till now. And no doubt, all of us have been burned by other people who we put our trust in. If you haven't, lucky you. <laughs> but most of us probably have, and some of us more than others. And some of us you know, there's all, there's a judgment issue there. Sometimes we put our trust in people we really shouldn't have. And we, the signs were there, but we did it for reasons because we wanted something out of it. You know, there's a, there's a complexity to look at there, but, but here's what I want to invite you to look at across the experience of your life. What percentage of your encounters with other people, engagement with other people, interactions with other people, have shown other people to be trustworthy, conscious, kind, positive actors versus untrustworthy, dangerous people. It's what percentage, if you look at your life, you can see those encounters where somebody really let you down. But how many other times encounters were there that were the opposite you know, obviously can't count them but just I'm asking you to survey the landscape from 30,000 feet from way up Most of us have lived lives of millions of positive encounters, trustworthy encounters with others. But we carry with us much less trust than was warranted by our lived experience. So I want to invite you to just see it in your own life. There's this interesting phenomenon happened a few years ago around the world when Airbnb uh, became a popular service and suddenly the idea that you could rent your couch or your spare bedroom out to a total stranger through this online uh, software became a thing everybody started doing. And initially, everyone who did it was a little afraid. because They thought, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna rent my couch out to someone from the other side of the world or other side of the country who I don't even know. 
people aren't trustworthy. I watch TV. <laughs> this sounds dangerous. And then there was this kind of mass awakening among people who did it. And you could read about it and hear about it, which was, wow, people are nice. <laughs> Strangers are trustworthy. They'll come and stay in your place. Take good care of it leave they're interesting it was this whole kind of breaking down of the f fear of the stranger that happened just around that one innovation and you know a lot of commentary on it and of course there are a few bad apples but some bad things happen and what they get a lot of media so oh look what can happen when you rent out your house see but but again th those in the the millions of of airbnb rental encounters between total strangers just a few bad things happened right so it was just an interesting breaking down of this. I don't know if any of you encountered it, you know, but, but it was a, it was a thing. And so let's just take a moment, just surveying the landscape of this world of strangers and just realize that other people are just like us. And, and by and large, people are pro-social. They're not anti-social. Most people are pro-social, meaning positive people who want to live moral good lives and respect others and treat others as they would want to be treated. That's like the norm for the human race. And yes, we all have egos and unconscious habits and ways in which we get in the way of that. But that's the world we're in. A world, it's a generally trustworthy world where you can put your hands and put yourself in someone else's hands, even a stranger, and generally they'll look out for you. So I'm more than anything just for this one. Let's just sit in that truth for a moment. Which doesn't mean everyone's trustworthy. It doesn't mean everyone's completely trustworthy. But this is a life positive event, humanity, despite how it might look on the news. Feel the life positive trustworthiness of this human family that we are. And how would your life be different if you stepped into that recognition and lived from there always? What walls could come down? What fears could be relinquished? What kind of trust? Would you live in? I've left you somewhere that you can build on build on this kind of self-trust and this trust in the other to take us to the uh, the ultimate trust and the ultimate leap of faith that spirit calls for This podcast is supported by our paying members in Craig's Awakened Life membership program. When you join the Awakened Life, each month you'll receive in-depth teachings and guidance in the practice of direct awakening, including a meditation workshop, four guided meditations, and a live online retreat with Craig. And when you register today, you can receive your first month for 50% off. Go to awakenedlifemembership.com to learn more and enroll. Thank you. 
If you enjoyed today's episode, we hope you'll share our show with others. And please subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to your favorite shows. If you have a minute to write a short review on your podcast app, we would deeply appreciate your support. You can stay connected to the show by subscribing to our newsletter at meditationchangeseverything.com. Each week, we'll send you new audios and videos from Craig, and we'll also let you know when we release new episodes of the show. If the approach to meditation we've been exploring today inspires you, you are invited to tune into a 90-minute online workshop Craig will be hosting called Meditation 2.0, The Miracle of Direct Awakening. In the workshop, he'll share a powerful new approach to meditation practice and guide you in a series of brief meditation experiments so you can experience it for yourself. You can listen to that at freemeditationworkshop.com. That's freemeditationworkshop.com. Check out our show notes for links to all the ways you can stay in touch with Craig's work. Meditation Changes Everything is created by Craig Hamilton, Susan Fries, Mason Ewald, Stephanie Murphy, Will Bowman, and Richard Klein. From all of us, thank you for tuning in.